And can, can you hear me? Yeah, now you are. We can hear you nicely. Yeah, fantastic. Hello, Thomas. Uh, okay, so we are here with our second case, and for today, and Sven is uh, with me, and we have started already a little bit, and maybe we have the patient slides. Maybe Sven, you can introduce the case. Yes, sure. Thank you, Andre, and hello to everybody. This is. Uh a 70 year old male patient, he has a CLI, he has ulcerations on his forefoot, ABI is low, only 0.3. He has the typical risk factors and already treatment of the inflow uh, with uh, standing of the SFA on the right side in May of this year. Next slide. Uh, this is the, the angiography of the below the knee arteries, you see popliteal uh, so far okay. And then uh, long, longer occlusion of the anterior tibial uh, artery as well as a distal occlusion and diffuse disease of the posterior tibial artery. Um, the only artery that is going down to the foot is the peroneal uh, and fi filling the foot arteries via very small collaterals actually explaining the, the wounds of this patient. Now strategy here is, next slide please, uh, we are in with a right femoral excess uh, with the six franchise here just in case we have to snare wires and have two wires then to bring out to the sheath. We want to actually recanalize uh, both arteries, anterior tibial and posterior tibial artery uh, if possible and treat them then with truck holded balloon. Yeah, fine. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, I think you can see already our screen, our Angu screen, with the Angu here once again below uh, the knee. Uh, Peronal is open until posterior occluded, as you have seen, uh, flow down. And sorry, that doesn't work now. Yeah, here once again, um, a shot onto the foot. So not, not lateral, and you can see that the main artery at the foot is the lateral plantar branch. Middle plantar is also a little bit open. The dorsalis uh, pedis has also an occlusion, so in fact, yeah, the, the, the lateral plantar branch would be nice to connect. And uh, we started already uh, going down here We're at, uh, yeah, with an 014 wire uh, loaded into a balloon. Uh, polymer coated, uh, I think, yeah, this is a command ES. Mm. And it, that actually reached down nicely hmm, here. I'm not so sure whether this is truly still in the artery. So, this is always a very difficult area uh, during recanalization of uh, yeah, tibial arteries going into plantar arteries or below the ankle arteries that, yeah, retro malleable posterior tibial artery with elongation of the artery. Calcium bifurcation then is something where I mean clearly uh, failure is not excluded. So sometimes it's helpful to flex um, the foot there in this uh, situation if yes. you ha are getting in trouble to cross yes, the bend. Yeah, yeah. So we will ask him, but uh, we have uh, experienced already some movements of the patient so it's it's not unfortunately not every patient then can hold the foot stable of course i can ask a doctor to hold it but then he's very close to the source for a long time so it is uh, helpful but um, uh, i would say not always really feasible yeah here uh, wire then somehow went uh, here we stretched the foot in fact when you did you did this here However, the wire went out, out of the artery here, so that's, that's um, not directing to the planters outside of the planter. I also don't think this is in a, in a side branch of the planter. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have to, uh, we tried then once again a little more with um, the, the wire tip. Uh, we changed to a regalia wire and a PT2 but also these wires, they went everywhere. And then we thought, I mean, yeah, we went a little higher and we looped the wire to find another access uh, to that occlusion, to the plantar bifurcation. That's where we are now. So here, currently, our wire is, is creating 
a little smaller loop as we have seen before and potentially this is our chance to once again break back here into the um, uh, uh, planter branches but yeah it of course can fail uh, let's see maybe we should also change wires maybe you would do you have a recommendation what's what's your pref preferred wire for that that's subintimal uh, it's subintimal but okay, you are you are at least um, yeah. in the vessel wall so that's that's the good yeah, news hopefully. here yeah mm, maybe so would, would you use another wire or my my preferred guide wire is the advantage 14 for such situations in particular if i have to switch to a loop technique uh, it's not so aggressive yeah. yeah, I find it a little bit hard to give a good shape to the uh, uh, advance 14, advantage 14. Pity um, So here I think, yeah, either I try once again um, a polymer coated relatively soft tip wire with a nice angle in, or I go to a CTO wire maybe to uh, penetrate uh, that sub, uh, yeah, this this membrane. Let's see. So if you are, you, if you would switch to a CTO wire, I, I believe you would need to advance the support catheter f further down, or otherwise you are at risk to perforate before you reach the reentry area. Yes, correct. Um, hope maybe you cannot see it, but this is now. Now I loaded a two centimeter long uh, coronal balloon. This is a uh, two okay. twenty mini track, and you see where the tip oh, yeah. of the wire is. That's yeah, the yeah. distal end of the balloon. Okay, so now we can see I the did second this marker. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but maybe I have to. Ah, that's sub internal. and that's that's strange. It's it's it's. Well, now it's in. No, okay, you are now in. it's in. Fine. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Yeah, it's the question now whether I have to go through the foot loop and also treat the antitibial artery, or is it enough here to just balloon uh, the plantar branch here? Let's see. Alternatives, of course, if this doesn't work, we could try the anterior go through the foot loop or even puncture the plantar uh, artery at the forefoot retrogradely, which um, uh, is usually quite challenging. We so just discussed sure the problem that uh, if you are treating the entire loop with balloon angioplasty, it looks very nice acutely, but on the long term, you uh, potentially even harm the situation because you, you are destroying the interconnections between the plantar and the dorsalis pedis artery on the long run. So um, I personally would, would stay with uh, the plantar artery as a first step. And if this does not uh, solve the wound healing problem, you can still try to uh, approach the anterior tibial in a second procedure. Yes, correct. That's also my, my experience and my opinion that if you don't have to touch the forefoot loop, then don't do it. Uh, you may only induce a disease and uh, see more occlusions or stenosis later on. And at what size balloon are you using? Now, that was a two millimeter diameter balloon, and I think this is enough. So. Of course, we hear sometimes reports of taking a 2.5 or even 3 millimeter balloon into um, four foot arteries or foot loops, but um, I wouldn't do this if I would if I have a relatively healthy distal segment, where of course I can create some dissections at the distal uh, balloon shoulder if I oversize here the balloon. So we go now in with a two millimeter distal diameter and proximal 2.5 210 millimeter amphirin balloon. Andre, there is uh, this uh, pu uh, push, this idea that in the SFA popliteal, you know, performing atherectomy, the, the concept of DART, you know, performing atherectomy followed by DCB 
We obviously don't have DCB here in, in the United States, but this vessel is not that calcified, but it's obviously diffusely, is long, is occluded. What is the experience there, you know, in regards to atherectomy in this area, in the below the knee followed by DCB? Well, actually, I like, I do uh, use atherectomy not infrequently, I would say, at least compared to many other colleagues here in Europe. Maybe um, not very frequently compared to Thomas. Um, however, I would say, well, in, in such a long lesion, I typically do not use atherectomy. I find it very cumbersome. And uh, of course, the idea to add uh, DCB after that and have a better uptake is a new idea, which uh, we also have not investigated actually at our lab, currently also because structural balloons below the knee are not uh, uh, reimbursed. Well, the, the Phoenix um, atherectomy device would work uh, pretty well in this indication, so uh, there is not a, that much calcium visible. Um, what I sometimes do is that I perform directional atherectomy in the areas of the entry and re-entry zones uh, of the dissection planes because this is sometimes the sweet spot for developing restenosis and re-occlusion. The other option is obviously laser. It's not that calcified. It's a long occlusion, and uh, but uh, you know it, those are those are good options. So I, I have seen some, some promising data from, from Italy with regard to drug-coated balloons for below the knee indication with new devices. A Chinese company, for example, is offering a, a product which um, is, um, at least in interim analysis, showing promising results, reduction in re-occlusion restenosis. So it seems that an appropriate DCB might work below the knee, and um, they are offering uh, those devices up to a balloon length of 30 centimeters. So one DCB, 30 centimeters in length. That's um, nowadays my my strategy to try to treat such a kind of lesion with DCB. Unfortunately, you know, we don't uh, have a good way of, uh, you know, we were, we were discussing whether we should do the AT and the PT, do one of them, do both of them. Uh, we don't have a good way of knowing when to stop in these situations intraprocedurally. Do you ever use the blush? Uh, you know, the folks in Japan, you know, have advocated looking at the blush, you know, of the, of the muscle. There is obviously some other techniques, the endocyanide greens. Do you ever use those, uh, Andre, in your lab to decide what to do? Uh, you mean blush of the distal segment uh, where right. you, as a sign of uh, being successful or right right you know they have used you know as you know you know so in making the decision whether yeah. if the PT you know you worked on the PT is that enough or do you need to go after the AT yeah, yeah. using the blush or methylene blue or uh, you know endocyanide green one of these techniques yeah, yeah, to sure. make a decision yeah yeah, we, I mean, we look for blushes, of course, we are always very happy if we see a nice blush. Uh, then this is usually the sign for us to, to be successful and that we can stop. Unfortunately, you do not see always blushes, but, but that's, yeah, I would say, uh, same, same for us. So also in this case, we uh, plan to use struck with balloons, although not reimbursed. Um, we can do this today. I mean, especially as you have discussed already, recent notice rate is so high for tibbles and especially uh, for below the ankle arteries that the big hope is, of course, that we can improve uh, patency with uh, drug or balloons. Uh, but uh, of course, here we still have to continue to work on uh, the the opening of the artery. Maybe we take a vasco truck. What do you think? 2.5 vasco truck, 2.5 200, 2.25. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, vasco truck. There's something which would, you would use now for this year, or? Well, I I I would try to inject nitro first to um, to overcome a potential spasm here. Because the lumen looks good.
not so bad. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't take Vascutrac now into the uh, inframaleola artery, but uh, I would maybe use it here at the Warte. tibial segment. Can you try five? Oh, Quatsch, mit so aus der 2,520 haben wir bestimmt. Um, so it's still searching for the right balloon. Yeah, but I think with the, with the foot area, we are already quite happy. But again, the inflow is not yet what we want. Maybe I missed here some kind of lesion more proximal, which we still have to balloon. Just a moment. Mm. Yes, there, there is definitely some competitive flow coming from the peroneal artery. And in such long diffuse lesions, uh, based on uh, here, the origin is probably the reason for for this competitive flow. Okay, well, geben Sie mir noch mal 2,5 auf 3 Ampere. Yeah, so still searching for the right balloon. We probably take a little bigger balloon proximal. Um, I don't know your plans. Do you have still a, a presentation to give and um, can we come back later or? No, we don't have, we don't have another um, presentation to give. Um, we will then, after your live case, uh, we will switch to case presentations. So you still have about 10 minutes of transmission time. Okay, yeah. So what do you think, uh, Thomas, a good area here to do atherectomy at the origin of the posterior or dangerous? Well, um, I would prefer here a kind of focal force balloon technique, cutting balloon or something like that, because um, the offtake is, is almost 90 degree, and uh, if you perforate in this area, it's probably not the best best scenario to consider because this is hard to seal. Yes. Yeah, unfortunately we ran out of our Vasco truck 2.5 to use it here. Um, we could use a scoring we have a fungus chunk, sculpt. Uh, now I have a 2.5 to 3 millimeter balloon in. So went down too far. Andre, another option is chocolate, if you have a chocolate balloon. Yeah, unfortunately not in our lab, <laughs> but let's see. Yeah. So 12 atmospheres, well, that this, I think should. This is a good improve. teaching case because it tells us or shows us um, the daily problem to identify sweet spots that are responsible for focal residual stenosis, which is uh, hemodynamically relevant. So if you have a long lesion like this, and you have a very focal dissection, based on a one plane angiogram, it's really hard to figure out which is the area of interest. So IBIS would be probably helpful here, even if I don't believe that in the small arteries it's so, so much, uh, or giving so much additional information here. So what, what um, Francesco Listro is proposing is duplex ultrasound um, from outside to identify areas of, of turbulence. So that was maybe a two minute inflation here. Interesting, if you look at the peroneal artery, it's almost three and a half, uh, four millimeter artery. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's a big artery. Yeah. It's, it, I, I was, initially, I was not sure whether there is a fully developed posterior tibial artery existing or whether this is a kind of uh, anatomical variation that the peroneal yeah, artery correct. is also, more or less uh, yeah. providing the plantar artery. So, Andre, what, are you are you routinely applying nitro before you finish your procedure in order to identify spasm, or is this only if you identify focal spasm? No, in uh, these typically long occlusions or lesions, also stenosis below the knee, uh, also and especially foot arteries, I practically give nitro after every 
ballooning. So if, if I want balloon from, from distant to proximal, I give nitro. If I balloon once again the whole lesion, I give nitro again. So very frequently I give nitro here. So put on my eyes, ganz ruhig liegen. I think it's better. But still, we have some residual stenosis at the origin. And in fact, you're right. We think, I think we should be a little bit more aggressive even there with ballooning. In fact, maybe some kind of scoring balloon, Vascutrac 320, so was zum Beispiel. Would you do something different uh, on the panel or someone? It looks pretty I good as it is still, right now. You want, do, do you mind taking a picture below, close to the ankle? Sorry? Do you mind taking a picture close to the ankle? Yeah, yeah, now, sure. Take us one. Take. Little faster, but not yet what we want. And the filling of the forefoot is good now, but still would it's be happy if I could uh, open that stenosis. Yeah, so I, I personally, I'm, I'm not very reluctant to implant a short stent from the TPT into the posterior tibial artery, um, going then uh, through the meshes and, and dilate with the same balloon into the peroneal. So uh, this usually does not result in, in, in any um, plaque shift into the peroneal, so that, that could be the other solution besides using now a focal force balloon. Yeah. Well, you, actually, I usually, although you may have seen some perforations at bifurcations below the knee, so far, luckily, I have not seen them, potentially because I haven't done so many cases as you with arthrectomy here. But so far, no perforation. If I just do one cut or two cuts at this area, and then balloon once again, gives actually usually very nice results. Julia, Contra contrast. But this is now a 320 Vasco truck. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, slow inflation. Maybe you need a 3.5, huh? It's mm. too small. It's, it's, yeah, it's still not oversized, definitely not. Yeah. 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 Or maybe four, what do you think? Maybe four. <laughs> four too much, maybe. <laughs> it will not perforate, no. Yeah. First we go for 3.5. So you have about one minute left. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. Probably even two. So again, as yeah. I said, the treatment after opening up the artery will be drug coated balloons, Lutonics. But first, of course, we want to crack this here. Yeah, it's very resistant stenosis, I must say. And uh, so I personally potentially would use here, even now, a small vessel turbo hawk to open this. But a short stent, in fact, could also be a good option. Can someone say it off? You definitely need to fix it because you need uh, optimal inflow into this long subintimal uh, recanalization area here. So you need high yeah. high pressure in the, in this um, new channel. Yeah. Just a moment. So, question to the panel, who else would, would switch now to azorectomy and if to what kind of device? Yeah, for this particular lesion, for the osteo lesion. Yeah. 
Und was weh? This is a soft uh, plaque, so I, I really think that you have a few options. Uh, it's short, it's soft. I think you can't go wrong with anything you use. Uh, I like directional atherectomy for this. It, I think you can get there and it's proximal, it's short. I think you can use the Phoenix, but I, Phoenix, I like it better if there's some calcium, something to grab, grab onto. Uh, I think laser will work. Uh, probably use a bigger uh, laser, like a 1.7. Um, those are the options, I think. Yeah. I don't have a lot of experience with arthritis below the knee, but I was just wondering if a short focal coronary balloon, like a 415 or 420 non-compliant, would actually yield a better result. What do you think, Andre? Uh, do you think it looks better after the, the scoring? or? Yeah, a little better, but not good enough, I would say. Yeah. I mean, there's still too much recoil. Exactly. And um, no, clearly I wouldn't leave it like this. And in fact, I think we're going to take in a small vessel turbohawk. Stephen, what about a bioabsorbable scaffold here? Yeah, I mean, it's not available anymore just to put things into context, but in this case, we have put several bioabsorbable stands across because the vessel is not too calcified. Sizing the vessel may be a problem because the tibial peroneal trunk looks a little big, maybe like a 4-5, and then uh, that's the only problem with the bioabsorbable in this context. But in this location, we have put, and we haven't had a problem with a branch vessel occlusion or anything along that line. Sizing would not be appropriate in this case. You know, I also think that to have a full expansion there, every time you inflate a balloon, there's still a, a little waste. Some sort of atherectomy, as the panel has uh, has agreed, whether it's directional atherectomy or laser atherectomy, perhaps you're going to have to use. Andre, um, I believe you are going for atherectomy now, and um, um, probably you can record um, interesting steps uh, if you will come back for the next live case uh, because we have now to proceed with the recorded uh, live cases or case presentations so we are going to the next session so we thank you for this uh, really exciting case presentation uh, extremely helpful uh, with regard to getting reaccess in particular to the plantar artery which is really one of the major challenges of below the knee recanalization so thank you very much and um, we Thank will you. proceed now with the new team. So um, I would la like to ask Professor Biamino to take lead no, and to no. moderate the next session. Hello. Hello, Andre. Yes. Yeah, we can hear you nicely. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Yeah, we're here with our next case. However, if you allow, uh, we want to show you the result of the last case, just the last two um, pictures. So we did, in fact, after ballooning uh, some uh, atherectomy with a turbo hawk. And uh, Svenny is just scrolling back to the last images. Um, OK, maybe Sven, can you take over and? Yeah. So I try to find here the last images, because if you remember, there was some remaining stenosis on the origin of the posterior tibial artery. And we did uh, several uh, hawk, turbo hawk for small arteries, several passes. Uh, and now you can see here the origin of the posterior tibial is nicely open. And we did additional ballooning uh, with uh, truck-coated balloons with two Lutonics, uh, 2.5 and 3 millimeter, and that's the final result here, actually. Yeah. yeah. Flow is much better than before. And did you did you perform the atherectomy procedure focused on the origin, or did you extend into the uh, posterior tibial artery? No, we definitely focused on the only on the origin uh, where the remaining stenosis was. I mean, all the other part of the artery opened up actually quite reasonably. Only the proximal uh, yeah, stenosis at the at the origin of the artery remained, and so we did the arterectomy also only in this area.
the maybe four centimeters uh, around the, the bifurcation. Okay, that looks excellent. Yeah. Thank you. Hmm.